Hi everybody, Jason here. I hope you're all doing well. Today we've got another Ask Jason. And I've got a great question from Joanna Polner. Now Joanna, via my website, she asked me if Zogchen and Hinduism are in any way related. Now, a lot of people are probably saying, what is Zogchen? Now Zogchen is a part of the Nyingma tradition in Tibetan Buddhism and also part of the Bon tradition in Tibet. So now Zogchen teachings are considered the highest of teachings in those traditions. And Zogchen can be translated as the great perfection. And so when we talk about Zogchen, it's a path a definitive path to liberation. It's one of the main vehicles that a Tibetan Buddhist or uh, someone who is involved in the Bon tradition would use to be liberated in this life. And now Zogchen, I highly recommend that you all go out and read Zogchen by the Dalai Lama. It's, it's high level stuff, high level stuff, but very important for also your understanding of Eastern thought in general, because when you understand Zogchen, you can start to understand another tradition that, yes, is a Hindu tradition, which is Advaita Vedanta. And yes, they are related, Joanna, but they are related in essence and in basis, not conceptually. So let's unpack this. So when we look at Zogchen, you have all of, you know, we ha you have Shunyata, right? Shunyata in Tibetan Buddhism, which is a concept in Mahayana Buddhism, is that ground of existence, that nothingness, that, that emptiness of existence, that the ground of existence, which is the core of all of our own Buddha natures. And that, when we look at that, concept of Shunyata is identical with Brahman because Brahman in Advaita Vedanta is specifically Naguna Brahman which is the qualityless Brahman it's not qualified now that is Brahman is considered incomprehensible to understand you can't comprehend it and it's beyond it transcends all thought so so the same with Shunyata right it transcends all thinking all thought and what we have here and what you guys have probably heard me harp on about through many of my videos is that in ancient times, and still we do this to, until today, when we have certain experiences, we frame it through our own subjective viewpoint. So when Zogchen is talking about the primordial state of being, that natural essence of our existence, that's the same as what Advaita is saying when they're talking about Atman the undifferentiated consciousness at the core of our being. They're parallel concepts. They're the same. Actually, not parallel. They're the same concept. But they're framed in a different understanding. So, you know, in Buddhism, you have a modal view of the universe. But in Advaita Vedanta, you have a substance view. So the idea that the world is, is Brahman, but in Mahayana Buddhism, Tibetan Buddhism, Zogchen, the world is shunyata. It's, it's nothing, nothingness, emptiness, uh, complete void. In, in, in not in a nihilistic sense, because it's not affirming that you, that you, it's not saying that you don't exist. You do exist, but the nature of your existence is this primordial state where, which, where all bliss and tranquility and peace arise from that state and doesn't arise from this state of the intellect and of this subjectivity, this persona that we all believe we are, which we aren't, according to these traditions. And so Zogchen and Advaita Vedanta are identical because the basis of their tradition, of both traditions, is this undifferentiated state at the core of our being, this state that we, we can't quite quantify but we experience it in deep meditation and prolonged sadhana we we have this state and that can be framed differently as i said 
through different subjective viewpoints. So in Zogchen, you have Rigpa. Rigpa is this awareness, this pure awareness at the core of our being where we experience this primordial state, this natural state of our existence, which is beyond qualities. It has no character, but there is a deep peace and tranquility there. Likewise, when we look at Vedanta, Advaita Vedanta, you have Atman, which is qualityless. And when you're in that state of peace, then you can begin to understand the greater totality, call that Brahman or whatever. But it is Brahman in, in the Advaita perspective. So... When we look at that, when I, when, when, you, when I kind of unpack that for you, you can see that both of these are identical traditions. And actually, when you get to a deeper level of understanding and you're around a lot of teachers, as I have been for a long time, then there is a common understanding between traditions that, yes, there is that basis that's the same, but we frame it differently. That's all, and that's how we need to understand it. This only goes for Eastern philosophy too. You don't want to lump this in with Western religions and Western philosophy. They have a different basis of understanding of the universe. A lot of Eastern thought have a similar basis, almost the same amongst especially the three great traditions. So there's a story of when Swami Savapriyananda, the great Advaita Vedantin of our age, when he was at Harvard and he encountered a lama there, Tibetan lama, and they got to talking. And you know, the Tibetan lama said, "Oh, you know, what tradition you're from?" And ah, oh, same tradition. He's kind of like this, <laughs> and they both laugh because the basis of the traditions, from an experiential perspective, is the same. It all comes down to your own preference and what you resonate with when you look at Eastern philosophy. You know. I always advise people to study all of the traditions because that's been my training. I've studied all the traditions and all of the meditative practices and I see a, a benefit in studying all of them and I feel that we're in a day and age where we can study all of them and we don't need to stick to one tradition. We can learn from all of them and actually integrate certain elements of all of them together um, as part of your own existence. And so I... I you know, there's always been, uh, you know, the belief that you need to stick to one tradition and this and that. And that, that was all well and good back in the day when you only had access to one tradition, but you knew of someone in another town who who were studying something else. And, you know, it's a, it's a good PR stunt. you, you got to get them to stay and you know, this and that. So, um, but we don't need to do that no more. You know, we can study from all the traditions. And what you do notice is that, when you do study them, there are so many similarities that it actually becomes important to study all of them because you do see the similarities and the differences. There are a lot of differences, don't get me wrong. But the foundations and the basis and the foundational framework of those three great traditions are almost identical. Again, it just comes back, it just comes down to perspective. It comes down to you know, in some sense, if you see the world dualistically and non-dualistically, non-dualistically, and all of this and that. But when we getting back to Joanna's point is when we're looking at Zogchen and Hinduism. Zogchen is related to Hinduism through Advaita Vedanta. They're they're sim they're similar in their basis and they're similar in their framework. But Zogchen could not be related a lot to say Sankhya or Yoga. It can be related to Sankhya and Yoga in the sense that the state of Rigpa in Dzogchen, that state of that primordial state of being, can be identical, we would say, with Purusha and Yoga and Sankhya. But outside of that, it's very distant conceptually when we look at the idea of Prakriti in, in, in Sankhya and Yoga. That idea of Prakriti kind of like, it doesn't, you know, it's not even an idea in Tibetan Buddhism, so, and, and specifically the Dzogchen tradition. So in some sense, Dzogchen is very distant from, from those 
sorts of traditions, but it's reconciled with Advaita Vedanta. Also, Vishishtavaita as well. Vishishtavaita as well, the qualified non-dualism. You could say it's related to that as well. But it wouldn't be related to Vaita, so strict dualism, like that, that path of Vedanta. So, yes, Joanna, you are right to assume or to ask that, you know, is there some similarity between Hinduism and Dzogchen? And yes, it gets most of its similarity through Advaita Vedanta. But usually only those who practice and understand those esoteric elements understand the greater totality of their tradition and understand their relationship with other traditions. Also, another thing to think about when you think about Dzogchen in relation to Hinduism is the evolution of Hinduism into Buddhism, Buddhism into Tibet. So that's also another thing you need to think about. And, you know, there's a lot of arguments whether Dzogchen originated in the Bon tradition before Tibetan Buddhism. And, you know, we don't need to get into that. It's, it's part of both traditions. But we need to look at the evolution of Hinduism into Buddhism. And so when we look at the Upanishadic era and we look at how it evolved and it went into Tibet, we can obviously see how certain esoteric elements within those traditions continue to be practiced and are still with us. Luckily, are still with us today. So that's something that we should all be grateful for, that they that the whole traditions haven't just wound up becoming religious and ritual based and are more and actually in the East they are still there's still a lot of focus on meditation and the deeper philosophical concepts of these traditions. So that's something that, you know, I hope you all of you are learning from watching my videos. And so, yeah, that's about it. That's that's all I can say about that, Joanna. And I, and I hope that all, a lot of you will learn from that. And, you know, I, I, I do implore you all to go out and read Zogchen by Dalai Lama. It's high-level stuff, high-level stuff. Actually, get yourself a copy of the Zogchen and get yourself a copy of the Manduki Upanishad and have a look at, you know, it's not completely similar, but the basis of the philosophies are the, they're the same. They're the same. The basis is the same, you know. So, and they are two books that will, you know, they're going to transform your worldview. And, but again, as I mentioned earlier, the philosophy can be somewhat, well, is, is different to a certain degree. You know, <clears throat> especially when you read in the Mandukya Karika, like if when you when you read the uh, Gaudapada's commentary, which is very important when you're reading the Mandukya Upanishad to get an insight into what Advaita philosophy is. Um, likewise, when you read the Dzogchen by the, the Dalai Lama. And there's so many other books in Tibetan Buddhism that you could read on the subject. I, I, I would also highly recommend reading any book by Alan Wallace or, or listening to any uh, talk by Alan Wallace. Um, he's a very amazing teacher of Tibetan Buddhism in the modern world and, and Tibetan and, and Buddhism in general, actually. So, all right, I hope that sort of unpacks that a little bit. We could dive deeper actually into that, but that's pretty much uh, how Zogchen and Hinduism are similar. So. I hope you guys all enjoyed. I hope you're all doing well out there. I hope you're all continuing to evolve and develop the mind and and to become the most peaceful people that you can be because that's who we need in the world at the moment and that's all we've ever needed. So I hope you're all doing that and enjoy your day and I'll see you guys in the next video. Shanti, shanti, shanti.